Well, I'll be stealing a march on April, to be honest with you. But um, <laughs> this tonight's show is a big one. It's one of those that we do at uh, each series, and it's always popular. I'll be talking mortgages, rent and rental rights, house prices, interest rates. For once, I'll be joined by a specialist panel to help me answer the questions because it's a complicated and a regulated subject. So uh, just to let people know, if you've got any questions on what you should be doing with your mortgages, uh, whether you feel that your rental rights of rents have gone up and what you can do about that, or what's going to happen to house prices, we'll do our best to tell you tonight. You can uh, ask me a question using hashtag Martin Lewis on Twitter if you want to, and we'll get that to the team. Lovely. Stuff. Brilliant. Thank well, so Hayley, I think we'll need to be watching your show tonight because she's come in with a question straight mm. away about her mortgage deal. She said it's ended. What should she do now? It's ended. What should she do now? Wow. Um, well, then you should be looking for a new mortgage deal. Watch the programme tonight. A little bit of the, the flesh that out a little bit. What, what, what she said there? Well, is. basically, she's saying well, that I her don't nation... know because, because it's such a short question. It's such a short question. No, we're gonna, we've got more details. <laughs> Sorry, Martin, um, this is me. It's my fault, still being the newbie here. My nationwide mortgage deal okay, has okay. ended. She's only got seven years left on her mortgage. She says, should I go for a fixed rate or a tracker as rates are dropping? Alternatively, I also have an opportunity to pay my balance of £64,000 off. So what is the best thing to do? OK, that, that I can do a little bit more on. As for fixed or variable, that is quite a complicated decision. I'll be going through that in detail on the show tonight. So what I'll focus on with you is whether you should be paying off your mortgage or whether you should be getting a new mortgage deal. If you should be getting a new mortgage deal, watch the show tonight because I haven't got... I'd take the whole phone in time just to go through the pros and cons of that particular one. Look, the rule I normally give you is if your mortgage rate is higher than the rate you can earn on savings, you are better off as a risk-free option putting the money towards the mortgage. If the savings are high, you're better off putting the money towards the savings. Now, in your case, you've got a totally blank slate. If you could get the very cheapest mortgage on the market and you've got the very best savings, savings on the markets, the savings rates would pay slightly more. However, you're going to have to manage and run with that. And I would say in most cases, for most people who are not absolutely on their finances and working with it all the time, the way the rates are right now, uh, you probably, the easier thing to do would be to take that money, clear your mortgage, be mortgage-free, have less monthly payments, and then think about what you're going to do with the extra money that you have each month. That would be the safest option. Whether it absolutely adds up in pound and pence, it would be a very, very fine debate at the moment for most people, unless you're going to ride the, ride the waves of the, the absolute top savings on a constant basis. So I don't think there's anything wrong with you looking at overpaying the mortgage in that, uh, overpaying the mortgage and clearing the mortgage in that situation, getting on with your life and being mortgage free. Yeah, oh, always good. Thank you, Martin. Uh, Tanya has emailed in. Am I paying enough into my pension? I wanted some advice regarding my pensions. I'm 35, wondering if I'm paying enough into it. Also, I can't remember the companies of previous pensions when I've worked for in different places. So how do I find out and do a bit of backlog stuff? <clears throat> Well, let's do the blast bit first. How do you find out your old pensions? There is a, a, a pension tracer on gov.uk, which when you put in where you used to work, it will tell you who the pension should be with, who to contact and find out. And I've talked about this on the telly many times. I've had people get in touch and find over £100,000 worth of lost pensions. So if you've worked in multiple places and you're not sure whether you had a pension or not, it's absolutely worth doing that. I mean, you could be sitting on a, a pension gold mine without realising it. As for have I put enough in my pension? Well, the answer to virtually everybody is no. Nobody ever puts enough in their pension. Very few people do out there. I'm going to give you my scariest pants rule of thumb, OK? Um, and nobody lives up to this, but I'll tell you the main point of it. You take your age when you start putting into your pension. Sean, you're the youngest one. Sorry to do this with you, but uh, how old are you? Make up a number if you don't want to tell me the real one. <laughs> 37. 37. So what's half of 37? Oh, don't do that it's to me. 18 and a half. <laughs> 18 and a half. So if you put it, you, the, the rule would say you need to put in 18 and a half percent of your earnings. That includes anything your company is putting in. And these days, most people are employees. Everyone who's an employee, they're in the auto enrolment system. So the company does some matching contributions. If you started at 37, you'd want to put in 18.5% of your income for the rest of your life to live on a really good retirement pension. Now, nobody does that. So everybody listening going, I'm not anywhere near that, I'm only on 4%. Don't worry, it's fine. The real lesson to that is the earlier you, the, you start, the better. So if you start at 20, half of 20 is 10. And then whenever you get a pay rise, if you can afford it, we're in a cost of living crisis, this doesn't work for anyone. I know, I get it. But let's say you've got a pay rise and you were given £1,000 a year extra, try putting a quarter of that 
in to your pension, before you get it in your pocket, before you've got the new amount of money, before you've got used to it, and try and push up your pension contributions. But how much should I be putting in the pension? The answer to virtually everybody is a bit more. Oh, like I say, it's hard work being a grown-up, having to do all this stuff and remember <laughs> it all. Um, this is interesting. This is from Ian, who says, Martin, are you doing investment advertisements? He says, I noticed a post on Facebook of Martin Lewis advertising to invest. Now I'm being pestered with phone calls. I do keep blocking the numbers, but I don't want anyone else to be scammed. So my question is, does Martin Lewis do advertising on Facebook for people to invest money? Well, anyone who follows me on any of my social media feeds will know that my profile picture has a pretend tattoo saying, I don't do adverts. <laughs> I don't knock on your door, nor do, nor do any of my team, nor, nor do we ever do cold calling, nor do we do anything like that. I don't cover investments either. <clears throat> any advert you see with me in is a scam. It is a fraud. Anyone telling you that I sent them, it is a scam. It is a fraud. Do not touch it. Do not sniff it. Do not go near it. I used to do, years ago, I used to do the odd thing where I'd help promote a charity. I won't even do that now. If charities ask me, I, I just have this blanket rule. I will not do advertising. I will not touch it or go near it because so I can give you this absolute cast iron guarantee. If someone is advertising something with me in it, it is a lie. Don't touch it. If someone in an advert is saying I recommended it, they don't have my permission because I don't give permission for doing that. So it's probably a lie. But even if it's true, they're doing it without permission. If someone tells you I sent them, if someone is talking about an investment and saying I said it's a good investment, they are thieves, criminals trying to steal your money. Do not go near them. There I'm we go. I don't think I'd be any plainer. <laughs> I think it's a no. <clears throat> Every now and again, though. No, no, joking. Uh, thanks, Sorry, Martin. Ian, I'm not annoyed. I just need to... I've been saying this for years. I sued Facebook. Yeah, I've I done know. everything I possibly can. There are now deep fake ads with me, and it's very frustrating. Lovely. Thank you so much.